Good morning, it's Alexa again with yet another Q&A death stream with Mike down here uh, below me. And today the topics are very interesting in some senses. Also a little bit of contradiction, you might think, from what he said. And two leaks, actually. Two things have been leaked. And actually a little bit more, I'm going to talk about this later. But yeah, very, very interesting stream. I hope I can go through it fast so this video isn't too long. But uh, I guess you guys want to know all there is. So let's just jump right in with the first one. All right, this is more of a business question. I'll do my best, but... Uh, uh, as a company, Ishii seems committed to not have pay to win mechanics. Yes, uh, like paying for stash space and things like that. It may be the, the it may be the least monetized APG I've ever seen. Uh, how have you made that work? What, uh, where other companies haven't? Um, uh, well, I think we, we, we probably have so, like, if we're going to compare ourselves to the other ARPGs that are, like, uh, really active right now. Um, and I think that a lot of them are um, are built. So, like, for, let's look at Diablo 4 for a second compared to us. Um, as, like, company structures. There's so much more overhead that goes into um, to, to Blizzard making... Diablo 4 than there is for HG making Last Epoch because like they have this this gigantic office space and you know all this overhead of stuff there like we we everyone works from home uh, with Last Epoch so like there's um, there's a lot less I guess like corporate overhead that's uh, for like payments and stuff like that um, and like there's there's it's it's you end up with different products you end up with different games which is good and pretty obvious thing to say i don't know why i said it but um like yeah like we, we i think we just have less expenses really um to pay for uh on, on that front and then like you look at like us compared to poe and there's really not a lot of differences there um the big difference being stash tabs and stuff like that um and i think the bulk of players who are playing poe end up spending probably a pretty similar amount on stash tabs as um, just our base game price. Like that's probably, I, I bet that's probably a pretty similar number. Um, and so it's kind of like the, like this, the, the, the base stash tab bundle is sort of just like the sticker price of the game. I, I, some, sometimes that gets said. I, I don't know. I don't know if I think that's directly equatable. Um, but because like they are free to play, um, there's, there's a little bit different monetization that happens there, but I don't think it's over the top at all either. So yeah, uh, great point there he brought up. Um, basically, yeah, yeah to, to sum it up, the SEPOC doesn't have monetization because it's an indie company. They are, don't have many expenses and this is why they are able to do this. As compared to Blizzard, which is a huge company, they have to pay a lot of staff and they have to have to pay for a lot of other things and much bigger marketing. And this is also sort of the problem you see with AAA these days, they are way too focused on marketing and fancy stuff you don't really need instead of actually focusing on the gameplay. It's even true for stuff like DEI, right? That is a big thing right now. There is so much money being put into this instead of focusing on the gameplay. And this is why I said before, and I will say it again, that... Indie companies right now are really crushing AAA titles easily. You see it left and right. Or even smaller dev companies. You also see it recently with the recent success of Stellar Blade by ShiftUp, which is an indie um, Korean company or dev company. The same was true with Pal World, right? They, the game cost, I think they said about 10 to 20k to make, right? To make. And they made like 600 million <laughs> with selling it. But it spent only about 10 to 20k because it was just five dudes sitting together making the game. And compare, compare that, for example, to Cyberpunk, which apparently cost $400 million to make over nine years, which is just insane. Now, of course, Palward isn't Cyberpunk, right? And some people might say Diablo isn't Last Epoch. I think that's true because Last Epoch is better. <laughs> but you just see... If a company gets too large, and that's just a general problem we see in general public these days, big companies are really struggling. I don't know if you know any, anything about the job market right now, but big companies have a lot of problems because they have so many, so much overhead. And the current 
economy admits for indie games or indie companies or smaller startup companies to make things even better when just five people sit together, they really enjoy it. And you see this with Last Epoch, same thing. Now, this took a long time to make this game because they had to learn how to even make games at all first. But I think this is an important thing. I think you will see more games like Last Epoch, more indie companies coming forth, making great games. And unless AAA companies learn to chat the bullshit they carry around with them, which is, I don't even want to go into detail, you know exactly what I mean. Um, all this consulting shit they have to run with, then they will most likely go down and keep losing to indie companies like this. So I know this is a bit of a, a ramble here outside of it, um, doesn't really have much to do with that, but I thought it was interesting to, to see also first Last Epoch is very committed to not make the game pay to win. There will not be coming anything like that. And they made enough money already, as it seems, so that shouldn't really be an issue. But also to see in perspective from the dev themselves what really is going on and why they are able to do this and to do things so much better than big companies like Blizzard. And that is, for example, because big companies have to deal with a lot of overhead and bullshit. I, I would say even maybe even half of what they do on a daily basis is all that other claptrap and only half of their all their energy, power and money is put into the gameplay. Whereas with EHG, easily 90 to 95% is gameplay and the rest is just dealing with other shit. So I think this is a, a key, powerful, powerful information. All right. Cycle slash seasonal player activity drop off has been a hot topic. Yeah. Uh, recently, have you guys perhaps considered releasing cycle content in phases, perhaps dynamically? For example, phase one may affect the content release in phase two, for etc. Uh, almost like a choice-driven titles, if that makes any sense. Like, um, no, I don't think we have. The a, a big part of it is um, leading up to and releasing a large content patch uh, takes a lot of dev time. There's there's a lot of things that um, that happen in the in the lead up to that and in the aftermath of that, which um, it takes a lot of dev time. And the, if we add in, as we add in more, um, so he remembers on a little bit. Basically, he's saying if you have more smaller cycle content, it still takes longer to do this because leading up to any sort of content publishing stuff is always a lot of dev time involved so you can't just throw out smaller brackets of content faster that doesn't work on from a dev side it might look like if you could just do that but for from developer side this doesn't work but there was a nice addition towards the end when he was rambling there so i want to want to give you that I, I, so i think that there's this balancing act between how um frequently we release content uh and how much content we can release total that um overall for the health of the game long term is um more what we're focused on than just getting more people to play longer in the short term because um, there also are there, there are a lot of other uh, there's just a lot of other games as well that people play on on a cycle like the flip flop back and forth between and we sort of expected that to happen and Yeah, it's it, the, the the player counts we're seeing right now are not concerning to us at all, if, if that makes you feel any better. What a key thing to say there. What a key thing. Because everyone right now is like, what the hell happened? Especially because Riker put out that video. Um, not a good call from him there. And he also backpedaled a little bit, changed the title of it. You know, you know the video I mean, what happened to Last Epoch. Um, he phrased it a little bit differently now because this is just a normal thing for any ARPG. Everyone has said it, so I'm going to just repeat what everyone said already. Um, because right now the player count is very much down from 200,000 on release to like 16k now. Um, but that is to be expected. That is how ARPGs work. Everyone's playing Necrolopis on PoE. Everyone played the PTR on Diablo 4 or even No Rest for the Wicked right now. So um, that's just normal. People just switch between cycles all the time. It's just crazy people like you and me who are currently still uh, last epoch addicted, but it's just normal. That is a totally normal thing. And not even the devs are concerned about it. It's only players 
some players that are concerned about this, but that's a totally normal thing. And I like that they have this view that they are not concerned that right now the player account is down. It will be way up again once 1.1 releases. And the key thing is, the more you have these cycles, every single time the player count will stay a little higher. That's usually how this goes, right? Because there is more content to play. So with each release of new content, like with cycles, um, the, the game gets bigger and has more content to play. That's pretty much exactly what PoE has. 10 years of cycles, repeated cycles with content in them. So there's so much to discover. So automatically people will stay longer in the game. It's just a completely normal thing. Right now, there is not that much content in Last Epoch, so you're, you're through it fast, and then people get bored and they do something else. Not everyone wants to grind to 2,000 corruption, and that's totally fine. Right? Um, I have a lot to do because I just make build guides and try new things because there's so much with, with, the, with the skills. I think there's a lot of content to do with the skills, but yeah. But that's a key thing. They are focused on creating content over cycles and thus making the game consistently bigger. So they have the long-term vision, which is very powerful, which is the key which will make this game successful. But I wanted to have this because the dev themselves, Mike over here, said it as it is. They are not concerned about the player count. The game is not that, even though everyone says it. It's totally fine. This is to be expected and totally normal. So everyone calm the tits. The hardest part for me with these is, is keeping track in my head of like how the game is now and how the game is on the development side of things. There's so many times when I'm playing on stream, especially, and like I'll I'll go to like, like okay, I've got this node in my head that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that node, and like I'll be I'll be building the tree out and I'll get there and I'm like, oh wait, that interaction doesn't exist yet. What am I doing? And the tree just looks so janky. Did he just? inadvertently or unintentionally not only just contradict himself from last week but also leak something there because he said he looks at the skill trees and that interaction isn't there yet because he said last time that there are no new skills coming with 1.1 and he's been testing 1.1 recently a lot and then he says when he's on stream and plays 1.0 Sometimes he doesn't think, okay, the interaction isn't there yet when he's skilling the character in the skill tree. I don't know, you tell me in the comments what you what you heard out of that. I think he indirectly said that there are some skill changes that even change interactions. Even though he said last time there are no new skills coming, they are reworking, not reworking, they are balancing the skills, basically numbers, right? That's what he said last time. But now it seems like there are new interactions, maybe something, I'm, I'm not sure. But it sounds to me like it, so let me know what you what you think of that. I think he maybe accidentally leaked something there. Oh my goodness, there's only 30 minutes left in the stream. How did that happen? I brought things. Enormous. <laughs> so pretty big. Uh, here's a thing in my bobber. Not to be confused with a who's it or what's it. Yeah, so there's a leak from some upcoming thing. I guess it's an item, I would guess. Um, any ideas what this could be? I have no clue what this could be. I guess, it, to me, it looks a bit like a relic. Um, I don't see how this could be, maybe a shield, but um, I guess it's a relic. Um, any ideas where this could go? I guess there's some blood on these things on the side over here. So maybe that's some sort of necromancer thing, maybe? I don't know. Let me know what you think of it. But interestingly, also there's another one. So let's go straight to that. The Lightning Elemental, as it says down here, Enemy Lightning Elemental, um, done by Patrice Boy Boiteur. We should actually um, credit the artists more because that looks fantastic, even though I absolutely hate this enemy. I think some uh, Kane in chat also said everyone's favorite long-range killing enemy because this thing keeps shredding me every time. It's insane. Um, but yeah, that looks cool. It's cool. So we're getting even getting new enemies or new enemy models, which is funny. And we get to this in the next thing um, because he contradicts himself a lot on these um, dev streams. So I think I don't know if it's intentional or if he just doesn't know if it's 1.0 or 1.1 or even future ones. Um, but sometimes it seems like a contradiction because he also said there, except for the pinnacle bosses and some balancing changes, there isn't really much coming with 1.1. I guess this doesn't count as much. Um, except for some uniques and all that, but this, I think, new enemies, enemy models, 
seems like it's more than just nothing or a little bit to me anyway any plans on boosting hp since we have a ward rework since we are having a ward rework i don't know where you got that information from i don't think we ever said ward rework um just to be clear imo hp needs some rework too very hard to build hp versus resistant resist and endurance to fight harder harder corruption well um i mean so so hp and it is like you you need uh, you need HP to go with resist and endurance, because like endurance directly scales off HP. Um, I don't have any details on. I should get these things. I don't have any details on potential upcoming balance changes. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's interesting on a bunch of levels because I think two streams ago he said that Ward is way too strong, and they are aware of it and they are looking into it. Now they didn't. He didn't say it's a rework, but. And he also confirmed that it's not going to have a rework. But he also said that they are looking into it. So I guess they're just going to dial down the numbers. Is that all that's happening? I don't know. Maybe it's just basically just straight nerfing Ward to not be as strong. But there is also some nuance into these things that are being said. Um, it seems a lot that he contradicts himself every now and then with the streams and what he says. But I think it's the nuance that's really the, the key thing here. Um, and you really have to look at the words. He didn't say rework the ward. Like, he didn't say they're going to rework Shaman and um, Forge God. But they're looking into giving them some love. What does this mean? Just dialing up the numbers of the damage? Is that really all there is? And earlier he said, um, there are interactions in the skill tree that aren't there yet, but they are in 1.1. So, we kind of end up knowing nothing <laughs> again. Um, I don't know if he's just not aware of this or if this is intentional, but it's sometimes a bit weird um, to, to, to listen to this and then it's sort of it's different from last week. Now, again, he didn't specifically say there's a vault rework, but he acknowledged that vault is way too strong and that they will balance it. So I guess it's just going to dial down the numbers. And so this way, the other resistances become stronger. Like HP, he even goes later into, into a whole... Um, scheme on how this will be set up and why nerfing is important i'm not going to show this here because it's just too much rambling but basically the idea is um instead of buffing the other ones you you nerf the two strong ones so they are balanced again otherwise you are balanced on a higher level and that doesn't really do anything and it sort of um, throws the balance out in general with the game so yeah what is going to get nerfed but maybe not in some sort of rework fashion uh, even though he kept, kept saying he doesn't have any details on balance changes, but two streams ago he said definitely that Walt is too strong and they're looking into it. So, But I wanted to add this because there's some nuance in what he says and you have to take everything with a grain of salt, even the thing earlier with the skill interactions because before he said there aren't any new things. So yeah, it's just, it's really tough to read into what he says there. And he's dancing around questions a lot. He doesn't want to spoil too much, um, except for the actual leak of this image, for example. But yeah, um, be careful what you actually, what you read into these things. You gotta really exactly look and listen at the words he's using. Uh, how big will the next cycle be? Are you able to put it in some kind of perspective? Um, it's tough to put it in perspective because there's, there's, there's still things that are like, is, is that going to make it or not? Um, we're really focusing on... So like we, we have this pinnacle boss system, um, and then we're focusing on you know, like a, a lot of things that came in feedback from 1.0. Um, so it's, I guess, like, put in perspective, it is not as much, like, stuff and content as you would expect from a full path of, like, a, one of the bigger Path of Exile suite, or, uh, patches. Like, the, uh, a large Path of Exile patch is larger than 1.1. That's about, that's about the only perspective I can give on it. So I think that was interesting on a bunch of levels. First of all, we know roughly the size of the patch. Not as big as a big Path of Exile patch, of course, because Path of Exile has 10 years under its belt of new stuff. And Last Epoch is still working on the, on the baby steps, on the baby issues, right? In, in early development. So lots of feedback being worked on. So I guess a lot of balance changes also are coming. And a lot of... Mechanics that work weirdly or have some issues 
and feedback from community. A lot of it will be worked or put into this, so that, that's going to be great. But new content-wise, it's going to be a completely new system. And from what he said last time, it looks a little bit like it is as big as the dungeon system. Not as big as the monolith system, but sort of like a, a third way to play the endgame, right? It looked that big. Maybe I'm reading something into it again, but that is from what he said. Sort of like the third thing you can play in the endgame. And um, so it's not, not small at all in any case. I guess the patch notes are going to be pretty large for 1.1, but it's also not going to be super huge, right? And nobody expected that, really, I think. Uh, will classes, builds be toned down a lot if what we've uh, heard in the past, 350 Corruption to be a successful build? Are builds reaching 1, 2, 5k too high? Or do you just want more builds to reach the 350 mark? Uh, I think both. Um, like, if a build is getting to 4-digit Corruption, we, we've definitely made a balancing mistake. There's, if a build, if a build is, is like consistently and easily hitting 4k corruption, th there there is a mistake we made uh, in, in in the balancing, or or there's a bug that's causing it to go really high. One, one of the two. I said it before and I'll say it again. I said it even on the video and people called me out on it. But here it is again. You have proof from the devs themselves. If a build can go to very high corruption, four digits, then this is not intended. It is a bug or it is a balancing mistake. The game is not balanced around that high of a corruption. He said it before, roughly 300, 350 to like 500-ish at the highest level is where they balance the game around. 300 corruption is sort of where you mastered a build. It has done everything it needed to do. It is successful. That is what he said before. So looking at builds and it only does 300 corruption is the wrong way to look at the game. This is not intended. This is just bugs from the early game launch. And it might be even happening in the future if they, they bug something. But it's not intended. I wanted to bring this up again because it comes up a lot. These 2k corruption builds will be gone in the future. Unless, of course, there's bugs. So they will not technically be gone. There will be bugs for sure, because that's how game or like development in general works. I'm a programmer myself, so I know that there will always be bugs and someone will find it out. And so there will probably still be some sort of 2K corruption bugs, like right now with the detonating marksman, for example, or the healing hands paladin. Um, but these are not intended. Okay, so forget that shit. If you reach 300 or even 500 corruption, you are at the highest echelon of what is designed for the game and your build is insanely good. Okay, So stop with the super high grind to 2k corruption. It's pointless and again, it will most likely be not possible anymore with your current builds in the future or with 1.1. Give it two months and your Healing Hands Paladin and your Detonating Marksman will not be able to run that corruption anymore because they will change what or bugs that are probably ca uh, currently causing this. So. Yeah, get that shit out of here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't even think that's healthy for the game. If the game will be balanced around getting to 2k corruption, I don't think that's healthy because the game is balanced about around the bulk of players, which are casual players. That's what it is. 80-20% of players, they play a cycle, they play through the content, they might even max out at 200 corruption to get the Omnis, which is the highest content, right? If you really have someone who wants to strive for that. But then they leave. They play something else. Then they come back the next cycle. This is how players play this game mostly. And it's healthy to balance it around because that makes it sustainable long term. If you have to go to grind hundreds of hours to get to 2k corruption with your build, that is very unhealthy for the game. So I'm glad they're not taking this approach, even though some people are very mad about this coming. I know because they think free and corruption is for weak losers. That's fine if you think that, but that's not what the game is balanced around. And I like that that he addressed this again. So yeah, that was it for this stream. Um, there were a bunch of other things not really... He was also mentioning indirectly that there might be some sorcerer buffs coming. I didn't put it in here. Um, you can check out the stream if you want. Um, and also about the uh, Osprix boss, the first one you find on the summit. A little bit of a change there, but potentially coming. Because he again said it's different in the build he was playing. So... Even though he doesn't want to admit it, I think there is more coming than just the pinnacle boss system and balance changes. It seems like it. Um, 
Maybe this is sort of the keeping expectations low and then over delivering idea. Maybe we'll see. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this, all this, what, what uh, he was talking about today. And um, I will see you in the next video.